text or objects with a reflection create a really cool look, which seems to be all the rage these days. The best part about it is, it's not that hard to do. A matter of fact, with a shortcut, it's real easy to do. And best of all, you don't have to wax or shine the floor to achieve it. So here we are in Motion 3. If you are in Motion 4, be sure to close out this tutorial and watch the Reflections for Motion 4 tutorial, since Reflections is one of the new features that can bypass a lot of the techniques that will be covered in this webisode. Today we are going to be working with this clip of the Cascade Range that is included as one of the five complimentary royalty free clips in my new Moving with Motion training DVD. A quick shortcut for creating a reflection is to rely on one already available in the Motion Templates. To access it, go up to File, Open Template. Select the 3D Text Project Theme. Over in the templates is a float.hd template. In the preview, you can see that we have a cool reflection. Click on the Open Template button. We can't see anything, so jump a second or so down the timeline. I'm just after the reflection of the clip, so let's get rid of all the extra stuff. Hit F5 to open up the project pane. Click on the Float Group Disclosure Triangle. We don't need it to fade in and out, so delete that behavior. I don't need groups 3 and 2. Open up the content in group 1 and delete the text and the particle emitter. Alright, let's populate the drop zone with our mountains clip. Let's go back to the file browser by hitting the command and 1 keys. Drag the mountains clip over and wait for the hook shape arrow. Voila! Okay, that was really easy. Would you like to know how this template was made in case you would like to make a reflection from scratch? Of course you do! Let's delete everything and get the playhead to the start of the project. Hit the Shift and Z keys to do a fit in window. Bring our clip back into the project pane. Hit F1 to open up the Properties tab. Decrease the scale of the clip to... 40% looks good. Raise its Y position just a little. Now we need to create the reflection. In order to do that, we need to duplicate our mountains clip. We could just simply duplicate it by hitting the Command and D keys, or we could create a clone layer. The nice thing about the clone layer is that if I swap out the mountains clip for another clip, it will automatically update the clone layer with the new clip. Go up to Object, Make Clone Layer. Line up the clone layer below the mountains clip so it's almost touching it. Next, we need to rotate our clone layer 180 degrees so it's completely upside down. If I change the rotation in the Transform section, you can see that it just doesn't line up right. Click on the Rotation Disclosure Triangle. To remedy this, you would have to rotate the Y rotation to 180 degrees as well. Get the Y and Z rotation back to zero. To save time, just make the X rotation 180 degrees. Next, you could lower the opacity of the clone layer and call it good, but we want to go beyond that. Let's take it to the next level so the reflection gradually disappears. A great way to do this is with a mask with the feather value cranked up, or with a shape. For this tutorial, let's go with the shape. Click on the Rectangle Shape tool and draw a rectangle over our clone layer clip. Hit the F4 key to open up the Shape tab so we can change the shape's color from a solid to a gradient. Click on the Fill Mode pop-up menu and choose Gradient. I'm sure you love this default color, but in order to really make a stencil luma blend mode work, our gradient has to only have luma values, which is anything in the range from black to white. If you click on the gradient preset pop-up menu, you can choose from some of Motion's nice presets. Seeing as how I want a gradient that goes from black to white, let's choose grayscale. It's hard to see our gradient, so let's adjust it. Click on the Select tool. Go back to our gradient and right-click on it. Choose Edit Gradient. 
We can move the start and end triangles around so we really see the white and black range. As a matter of fact, let's get the start triangle high enough so the white value is not so strong. So we see more gray. Next, let's change the blend mode of the rectangle by right clicking on it. Choose Blend Mode, then Stencil Luma. Notice how our white area of the mat is transparent whereas the black area is not. So we have a nice reflection. Another way to achieve the same effect as the Stencil Luma Blend Mode is to utilize the Add Image Mask feature. To learn more about that, check out my Creating a Hologram tutorial. Anyways, unfortunately, we can't see the mountain's clip because it is being affected by the Stencil Luma as well. In the Project pane, drag it up above the rectangle layer. If you want to make additional changes to the gradient, you still can. I'd say that looks pretty cool. Let's kick this technique up a notch and manipulate our reflection like so. Go to the Library tab, Content, Template Media, and Fire. You may notice some of this fire from the fire templates. The one I'm after is the firecrawl.mov. Select it and check out the preview. Perfect. Click on the Apply button. Drag it below the mountain's layer. First off, if you scrub down the timeline, you can see that the fire is trying to engulf our mountains. So, let's rotate the fire clip 180 degrees. Hit F1 to open up the Properties tab. Be sure to select the Fire Crawl Clip. Type 180 for the X rotation. We are doing the X rotation so it is the same as the clone layer. Increase its scale so the clip's left and right sides go off the screen. We need to do this because the fire crawl is an SD clip and we are working in an HD project. Move its Y position so it looks like it is coming from underneath the clip. If you scrub around, you can see that this is looking good. Next, we want our reflection to take on the characteristics of the fire. To do this, go to the library by hitting the command and two keys. Go up to Filters, Distortion, which is what we want to do with the clip, and then select Displace. Drag it over to the clone layer. Hit F3 to open up the Filters tab so we can work with the filter we just added. We want the fire clip to displace the clone layer, so drag the fire crawl movie over to the map image well. Hide the fire crawl clip and the rectangle shape. If you scrub a minute down the mini timeline, you can see that the fire is only affecting part of the clip. But if you re-enable the clip, it is completely covering up the clone layer and should be affecting the entire clone layer. The reason this is, is because the fire clip that we placed in the map image well affects the whole clip. For example, Let's make the clone layer its full size and center it in the screen. Do the same with the fire crawl clip. Let's hide that. Disable the fire crawl clip and notice that we have a perfect match. So, no matter how big I make the fire clip, it still fits in the clone layer perfectly. Let's undo all of that. Here's the workaround. Create a new group and call it Fire. Move the Fire Crawl clip into the Fire group. Move the Fire group below the clone layer. Next, Hold down the Command key and select the Clone Layer and Rectangle. Right-click on one of the selected layers and choose Group. Call the group Reflection. Currently, the Displace filter affects the Clone Layer. In order to get it to affect the whole working area, we need to drag it up to the Reflection group, which is the whole working area. Okay, so now it is not affecting anything. 
Hit F3 to open up the Filters tab and select the Displace filter. Drag the fire group into the map image well so our reflection group will take on the fire group. Now our reflection group and fire group are the same size and rotation. Plus, by being in a group, our displace filter can go outside of a scaled down clone layer's clips, boundaries, and into the empty space around it because our group is this whole working area. Make sure the Reflections group is selected and select the Group tab. Check the Fixed Resolution checkbox and look at that. If you scrub around, you can see that the fire is distorting the clone layer. A matter of fact, hit the Home key to get to the start of the project. Hit the space bar to play the project. Notice how the clip's edge is now affected by the fire. It wasn't doing that earlier. Once again, that is because the Displace filter is affecting the Reflections group as opposed to the clip itself. Re-enable the rectangle shape so we get our reflection back. I love how the fire and reflection work together. Also, another fun effect is to disable the fire group and it almost looks like the mountain clip is hovering over some water or something. If you go back to the Displace filter settings, you can crank up the horizontal and vertical scale sliders, which exaggerate the effect. Undo that. Be sure to select the fire group. You can also add a Gaussian blur to the fire group, which will make the effect look even smoother depending on the amount you choose. Remember how we did the clone layer instead of duplicating this clip? Hit the Command and 1 keys to open up the file browser. Drag the Well See You Movie to the Mountains clip in the project pane. Wait for the hook shape arrow and Motion automatically swaps out the Mountains clip and the clone layer. Well, it's been fun. This has been Steven Smith with yet another motion training tutorial. Have fun adding reflections to your next project.